I'm Mark Sadler. I'm a PhD student in Josh McDermott's lab in the Brain and Cognitive Sciences Department at MIT. Human pitch perception is perhaps the most studied aspect of human hearing. So pitch refers to the fact that sounds can be high or low. This is true in music. It's true when we speak, so I can make a very low sound or a very high sound. And while I'm changing the pitch of my voice, I'm changing the fundamental frequency. And the perceptual correlate of that is what we, we refer to as pitch. And because of it's important in music and speech, there's been long-standing interest in understanding how the brain derives fundamental frequency or estimates fundamental frequency from sound. So in hearing science, right now, we have really, really good models of the front end of the system. So people have invested an enormous amount of effort in trying to understand the ear and the auditory nerve. And there are very good computational models that can predict with pretty good accuracy what the auditory nerve will do in response to sound. By contrast, we don't have very good models of the rest of the auditory system. In this paper, we train deep artificial neural networks to estimate the fundamental frequency of natural sounds heard through a human cochlea. Uh, so the input representation to our networks, rather than just being sound waveforms directly, is our simulated auditory nerve representations of sound. There were two key questions we sought to answer. The first was, what kind of information has to be provided to a model from the cochlea in order to get behavior out that resembles that of humans? And the second question was, to what extent are the properties of human pitch perception a consequence of the, the nature of natural sounds? So there's a long history of trying to explain pitch perception mechanistically, but in this project, we, we instead asked, why does pitch perception have the properties that it does? The only constraints that we put on our model are the task of estimating the fundamental frequency of natural sounds, the kinds of sounds that are important to human listeners, such as speech and music, and the ears of our model, the, the hard-coded peripheral auditory model that we use as the network's input representation. And then we let the model just learn whatever strategy it can to estimate the fundamental frequency of those sounds. Despite never being fit to human data in any way, when we tested our model on the same stimuli from all these human pitch cycle physics experiments, we found that the model does a remarkably good job replicating aspects of human uh, behavior. Uh, it really suggests that you can understand these aspects of human behavior as byproducts of a system that was optimized to estimate the fundamental frequency of natural sounds heard through a human cochlea. Now we can go back in and test which constraints of the model were actually necessary to achieve human-like behavior. In order to build a model that reproduces human pitch perception, you have to give it input from the cochlea that preserves the high temporal fidelity that we think exists in the auditory nerve. Um, and that's pretty compelling evidence that human pitch perception is actually making use of that very precise spike timing that's coming out of the auditory nerve. It really suggests that the, the char characteristics of human pitch perception are really being driven by the temporal resolution in the cochlea. You also have to optimize it on natural sounds. So if you instead train it on various kinds of unnatural sounds, you get out a system that can estimate fundamental frequency, but that does so in ways that deviate from human pitch perception. And so that suggests that pitch perception is really fundamentally shaped by the demands of estimating fundamental frequency from natural sounds in natural environments. What if the model was instead optimized for some idealized world where there was never competing sources? You only ever heard one sound perfectly at a time. How might that have shaped the pitch strategy that humans use? And we, we, we can test this in our model by just training on sounds with no background noise. And when we did this, we found that the model exhibits very unhuman-like behavior. In particular, it's not able to replicate key aspects of human pitch perception. I think one of the, the really interesting contributions of this work is that we're combining detailed uh, models of what is known about the cochlea with sort of data-driven machine learning techniques. And with the combination of these, we can build uh, models that are able to perform real-world auditory tasks. And because we know what's happening in that input representation, we can go in and see how changes in your peripheral auditory system in our model's cochlea, how those uh, drive changes in behavior. 